Live from Las Vegas, it's The Cube, covering HPE Discover 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for HPE Discover 2017, exclusive SiliconANGLE Cube coverage, our seventh year. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Trip Partain, uh, HPE CTO for GE General Electric and Anthony Rokas, VP of Software Engineering at Predix for GE Digital. Guys, welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thanks guys, thanks, thank for, you. thanks for coming on. Obviously, GE has really been on the front end of uh, IoT. You guys have been doing extremely well um, and changing over digital bringing digital to analog, kind of connecting those worlds. Um, what's your take on this intelligent edge? You got to love the messaging. Right. You got to love the messaging with HP. Yeah, God, it, it's great. Um, I think this has really started to take off. Um, if you look at our positioning, um, we really are going after the edge, right? And with Predix being our forefront in the Predix system, um, we really believe in the opportunity here. I think, as you heard Meg speak yesterday, the engagement between GE Digital and HPE is getting stronger. We're finding more and more synergies over time. And both our strategy and their strategy are really starting to line up very nicely, both edge and computing in general. I had a chance a couple years ago to host a panel with uh, your CEO, Jeff Immelt, and United Airlines, hospital in Chicago. And at that time, it was really hardcore, tangible dollars on the line. Yeah. I mean, we're talking highly instrumented devices and machinery that you guys, now so you're in, and there was some significant dollars involved, so like just getting the data is a very low hanging fruit, but big numbers. This is now going mainstream where everyone's kind of having this awakening moment trip where it's kind of like, hey, we're going mainstream. So what's next for you guys? As the world starts <laughs> getting up to speed on IoT, what's next for GE? What are you guys doing now to go to the next level? What's that next tier of, uh, of digital IoT for you guys? Yeah, honestly, in my, uh, in my view, in GE's view, if you look at what we've done in the past, right, it's really the foundations getting in place. It's um, sensor-enabled devices getting assets, the sensors more progressive, and that's kind of in the first sort of uh, step, right? Then we get into how do we collect that data. <clears throat> Where you think GE is headed now are the smart analytics, right? It's the outcomes that are going to drive those big dollars of productivity. It's really getting into the digital industrial revolution area. To date, it's been a lot of the foundation getting in place, and I think that's where you're going to see tremendous growth over time is when you unleash data scientists on wealth of information, the outcomes and the productivity the world and the economy is going to see, I think it's going to be great. I love the quote, the Jeff Immel quote. We, we, we refer to it all the time. I went to bed, an industrial giant, and woke up a you know, software company. Right. And so, uh, clearly it underscores the transformation. We were talking off camera about the study that we did many, many years ago. I mean, the numbers are staggering. I mean, it's in the trillions. Um, but one of the things that we found was this notion of, and we talk about it all the time, and I'd love to get your take on it, is the IT and OT. They're not talking to each other. Typically, they're, they're not birds of a feather. How, what are you seeing, Trip, in, in, in your experiences with customers in terms of those organizational, let's start with the IT side and we can talk about yep. the OT side. Yeah, and, and as we've had our partnership with GE continue to develop, the one thing we found is we have a lot of similar customers. And these same customers are extremely large customers, but what's interesting, we don't talk to any of the same people, right? On the HPE side, we tended to talk to the IT teams and data center, and GE would be out in the factory floor or out in the fields or a, a more industrial. Um, but in order to really fulfill the IoT <coughs> promise, the two groups are really having to come together, and I think it's taken time for messaging to really sort out there. Uh, and one of the things that we're really doing at, from a, uh, taking advantage of our partnership to help solve the problem is when we have IT teams come to visit HPE, we bring along GE operational experts to actually talk about the business side of the outcome so it's not just an IT conversation. And really intentionally crossing those paths and leveraging our partner in GE to bring that capability to us so we can have a holistic conversation to the customer. And, and so, so who's, who's in charge here? Who's driving the bus? Is it the OT guys or the IT guys or it's, somebody above? It's both, there's two drivers. Uh -oh. right? Two hands, <laughs> four hands on the wheel almost. Right? If you look at the OT side, there's a lot of challenges we're facing where HPE and the IT community is coming to help. For instance, uh, for, for existence, uh, data sovereignty. Right? So one of the challenges we have is a lot of our companies or our, our customers want data sovereignty and this is where IT has solved that problem for us, and on the OT side, we need to figure out how do we store, maintain, analyze that data within a country. And again, that's where we're bringing the IT com companies with us and partner 
to help us. Right. So when a plane flies from Spain, crosses France and Germany, <laughs> and ends up in <laughs> Ireland, where's the data? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> well, it, it brings you to the data because there's sort of a, a data love triangle going on. You've obviously got devices installed. HPE brings equipment and your customer. So talk about the conversations that you're having with your customers. I mean, who owns the data? The factory says, hey, wait a minute, it's a system. That's my data. GE obviously has to do predictive maintenance. Same with HPE. There's all this data flowing. What about data, I don't know, ownership or IP? What are those conversations like? Yeah, and I can say, certainly from the GE side, it's always been our stance that the customer owns their data, right? We are m running a multi-tenancy environment and a platform, and they own that data. How that data is stored, we can help facilitate, right? We offer Blob Store and a couple other technologies that allow that. But at the end of the day, in a multi-tenant environment, the customer owns that data. And we will facilitate with HPE where that data needs to reside based on the customer. So you're need. not trying in any way to monetize that, that data? I mean. I, I, I mean, I'm astounded, why, why not, right? Yeah. So, well, but, I think the monetization really comes in with how you empower the customer to get the value out of the data. Um, and, and in a former life, I worked through the data monetization world and there is certain amounts of value in, in, the, in the data itself, but there's also value in helping the customer determine what their data can offer to them and the business cases that we're able to jointly present to the customer and the value that that generates still allows for us to monetize the process by which we help enable the customer to really bring these data assets together, really understand areas that may, they may have seen silos of the data before, but they weren't looking holistically at it and being able to, in a very timely fashion, correlate between that and then actually see a different answer to a problem where Yes, this meter may be reading 80, but if I only, and, I, and it should be 60, but if I throttle it to 70 and I get 10% more output, it's worth running at 70 because of the benefit on the revenue. So you actually can make trade-offs across certain areas where you weren't able to do that. But Predix is informing models, is it not? I mean. Yeah, it, it's, it, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're taking that data and for the customer creating an outcome, right? The analytic, um, the information that we can derive out of it to make a more productive or a more efficient outcome or running operation, that's where we get the monetization if from. If data's a new oil, then you need a refinery to your point about the monetization question. That's interesting because we see the same thing where if you make the data freely available or you treat it as an asset to the customer, mm -hmm. it's how it's monetized in its effect, yeah, right? right? So, or, or there's a tactical, let's monetize our data. So depending how you look at it, there's different approaches, right? I mean, this right. is kind of the key thing. And, right. and even though we're, it's, it's not the way now, if you follow the history of how other industries have dealt with the data. So I came out of credit services long ago, um, and it's very common now in the credit services industry for data to be monetized and leveraged, like for credit reports and for that whole banking and financial process to take place, but it didn't start that way. Yeah. So my guess is, as we continue to show value to the customer of their own data, as they then start to think about, wow, but if I could do comparables, between my data and industry data, that would help me even more. I expect that the customers that today that are worried about who owns the data will eventually start asking players like HPE and GE Digital to help them solve that problem and they'll evolve to that sort of data monetization like a lot of the other industries and have. The whole new right. digital just creates a whole new way to look at things. It's not a linear supply chain anymore whether it's relative to the data or whatnot. So, Super cool. Final question for you guys, and I appreciate you coming on uh, theCUBE and sharing your insights. What's next for the partnership with HPE and GE Digital? Obviously, the digital transformation is in full swing, impacting business transformation, impacting the DevOps aspect of cloud. Yeah. All this cool stuff's happening, true private clouds on fire, hybrids, the doorway to multi-cloud, a lot of cool stuff happening. What's next for you guys? Yeah, I think from, from our side, we're really excited about the partnership on the edge. Right? When we start looking at the computing requirements and needs at the edge, close to the asset, low latency, that's where HP and GE are really going to start to partner very heavily and you're going to see a lot more engagement at that level. So I think the edge is going to be our focal point. No, absolutely, and I think uh, the uniqueness we bring to the market with our edge line converged systems, we're able to do things at the edge, leveraging GE Predix, and then also bringing in other third party partners in conjunction, and now you have enough compute power in the right form factor that can all sit and reside at the edge, process at the edge, and solve the problems there locally. Doesn't take away from the cloud aspect, doesn't take away from being able to have a macro view across multiple scenarios. Right. But if I'm on an oil rig in the middle of the North Sea, 
and it's gonna be very important for me to have everything I need in the right form factor at the lowest power utilization possible and still solve my problems. And can process all yep. the data right there. Guys, we are pushing it to the edge here. The Cube goes out to the events. That's the edge of the action. We'll bring you all the great videos. Thanks for coming on this. The Cube live coverage from the edge at HP Discover 2017. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with more. Stay with us. <laughs>